Krishnamurti Subramaniam joining us. He is an executive director at the International Monetary Fund. Mr. Subramaniam, thank you very much for taking out time to join us this morning. Let me ask you the big picture and then let's dive into some, some complexities. How is India doing, sir? I think India is doing very well. So, um, uh, let me wish a very good morning uh, to all, all our viewers. Um, it's uh, midnight here in the, in, uh, the US in Washington, D.C. Uh, if you look at the figures, if you recall, um, you know, uh, during, during COVID, there were many who actually had pontificated that India will, uh, you know, endure a very tough time. But has, India has grown at more than 7% uh, since then, 8.2% growth in the last year. And let me point out, you know, uh, oftentimes uh, a lot of narrative is, uh, is, is, especially negative narrative is portrayed. While there is certainly a need for us to, um, you know, create more jobs, uh, we have to put that in perspective. Uh, the if you look at the last ten years, and this is using the uh, data. You know, the, the, the CLEMS database, which actually I can tell you is a very high quality database, not only used in India, but across the you know world. And RBI has used that data. They actually have pointed out that in the last 10 years, about 12 and a half crore jobs have been created in the last 10 years, compared to only two and a half crore from 2004 to 2014. And if you take out agricultural jobs as well, nine crore jobs have been created in this period. So I think it is important. Also, let me put in perspective, you know, yesterday's economic survey has shown that we need about 80 lakhs to be you know, 80 lakh jobs to be created in a year that is absolutely as an important fact but do also keep in mind that that is out of a labor force of almost 60 crores in other words that is just about 1.1 1 1.15% 1 um, so while in itself actually 80 lakh seems like a large number but that is that is 1% everything when we look at india scale we have to actually use the correct base so while there is a need for us to create employment, but I think you know the story on jobs has been far better than the, some of the narratives have been talked about. Now, in terms of what needs to be done, I mm -hmm. think going forward, it is important that some of the steps that have been taken in manufacturing, you know, to en encourage that growth, I think is 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 fostered further. Manufacturing growth has in the last year has grown at 10% in real terms, I think, which is very good news. Uh, private investment also, I think, is picking up. You know, the economic survey yesterday pointed out that in 2023, the uh, NSO data shows it has grown at 19.8%. And uh, this year as well, if you look at the access report, which covers about 3000 firms, Again, you know, cop, uh, private capex is likely to grow at 19.8 percent. So that's good. I think these need to be really encouraged by, you know, the labor laws that were passed during the COVID times. You know, the subordinate legislation for that needs to be passed. Okay. Um, I think some of the, you know, uh, restrictions that are there and the economics that we talked about in, you know, enabling ease of doing business, that needs to be also taken out so that our firms can grow and thereby okay. create more so, jobs. So, so the good news, ladies and gentlemen, is that yes, on every parameter, the country seems to be doing okay. Uh, it seems to be doing better than okay, heading in the right direction. It's, it's survived COVID exit pretty well. The global situation is also improving. So the global headwinds are better. So we seem to be in a good place. In that context then, Mr. Subramaniam, what do we seek from now a stable government at the union centre? Do we seek from them the incremental fine-tuning, the implementation of what they've said, the saturation of the government schemes and whatnot? Or we do seek still fundamental reform, structural changes? So I would put the objective as 8% uh, growth. That's what is India's potential. And therefore, you know, enabling, uh, uh, you know, ease of doing, doing business in particular, as I emphasized, manufacturing, uh, inclusive growth, some of the measures that have been taken on the, in the creation of the public digital infrastructure, those need to be, you know, doubled down so that credit creation, especially for those that have hitherto not had the benefit of, you know, getting credit from the formal sector, that is encouraged. I would especially emphasize that, you know, uh, lending that is not just based on collateral. I think, you know, in an economy that almost 60% of the gross value added comes from services, it is important to also have lending that is not just based on collateral, so cash flow based lending, but without NPS. And I think that is something which is important Tough at one. the same time. 
I would also mention on the tax side, I think both direct tax and indirect tax, I think it is critical to streamline that further. Um, if we take the direct tax, you know, the, the code that we have is from 1961. You know, in other words, it actually is 83, year, 83 years old. And there's been so many amendments that, you know, it's become a very voluminous uh, document that is actually the dream for chartered accountants, uh, but not necessarily for common people. So uh, this is an aspect, you know, I was part of the committee that had rewritten the direct tax code, you know, in the report was submitted in 2019. Okay. I think that needs to actually be acted upon so that the, you know, one of the key areas for, you know, ease of doing business, which is taxation, you know, that is streamlined further so that the individuals and corporates have a much better experience on the tax tax side. Even on GST also, I think there is now definitely now need for further, further more streamlining. I would especially emphasize on GST, if you see, you know, here in the United States, almost all of food is, you know, taxed at zero percent and i think if if a, if a developed economy you know uh, does that i think india as well all food whether it is processed or unprocessed food we should be moving towards actually you know taxing it at at, at possibly at zero percent uh, okay so that our poor can benefit from that okay. so these are some areas that i would okay highlight. i have a couple of questions before we let we go i know our time is limited and as you mentioned it's midnight your time already so we'll we'll, we'll send you off to bed shortly uh, or, or to family. Well, uh, I have to listen to the speech as well. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, well, then, you, then you've got another 45 minutes, to, so 45 minutes to wait. But let me go to the other side of the spectrum, right? On, on mm -hmm. a whole section of the population mm -hmm. at the cusp, perhaps, for a near saturation of the basics. We are almost there in yeah. several areas where you have a house, you, yeah. you have power, uh, you have running water, you have a toilet. Uh, which all of you, you and me, take that for granted. I, I can't imagine what life would yeah. be uh, if I had to go to the bathroom right now uh, and, and there was yes. no toilet available uh, in walking distance. So on that cusp, how do we seem to be doing? So I think there's been significant improvement in that. So some of the essential necessities, I think, have been taken care of. But what is really critical is for, I think, investment in human capital, um, you know, some uh, investment in education. We do need to skill our people, you know, even better, uh, especially in the context of some of the technological changes that are here. Uh, you know, for instance, artificial intelligence. Um, secondly, I think our corporate sector, you know, and here I urge organizations like CII, FIKI, you know, ASSOCHAM, etc. They need to put their heads together to actually think about growth that is more labor intensive. I think, you know, uh, the tendency for some, you know, firms to basically myopically only sort of substitute cap, you know, capital for labor is something that has to be discouraged. We need to find ways to have you know, labor intensive growth so that there's job creation happening in the economy. At the same time, we also have to think about agriculture. This is one area where, you know, there is too much intervention by the government, whether it is actually power, whether it is fertilizers, you know, these are all subsidized. And, and now for the last several decades, I think the pernicious effects of these subsidies are you know, are, are, are clearly being seen. So agriculture, especially at the state level and state and you know, center together, have to think about because this okay, is one so, area so what do we do? Okay, let me, really, let me, really let me then that may convert that into my last question, all right? Mm -hmm. Because you and I both know that agriculture is subsidized even where you're sitting, it's subsidized in Europe, it, it's subsidized to the tunes of billions of dollars. But the trajectory yeah. tells you that as you head to an advanced economy, there are less and less percentage of the workforce employed in agriculture and it turns into capital intensive. Our problem is we don't have jobs for the other side once you exit ag ag agriculture. So agriculture reform, the, the free market of, of, the, of the agriculture, you know we are struggling with it. And I, I know you might not want to make a political policy comment, but if we keep struggling with it, what kind of risk does that involve for us? So I think the problem in agriculture as you have pointed out is you know productivity has not grown and that is because of many of these subsidies i think you know it is important to keep in mind while definitely and i'm the first person to admit that even the advanced economies subsidize subsidize agriculture significantly but they do it in you know in ways that are start are uh, more efficient than you know ways in which we do it for instance because of subsidies of power you know we've had basically a depleting water table uh, you know and and climate Climate change also will have impact on product on productivity in agriculture. So I think you know s s streamlining some of these subsidies to ways in which they are actually done more efficiently is important. That will then also enable some of the you know uh, uh, cons consolidation of 
farms uh, and thereby uh, you know uh, uh, enable in, in improvement in productivity at the same time i think it is already happening if you look at yesterday's economic survey you know it shows that males rural males actually are moving away more from agriculture there is this fact females are for instance some of their you know uh, involvement in agriculture is increased because of the substitution effect but males are actually moving away i think this process will accelerate further as we create more jobs in manufacturing and that's why the emphasis on manufacturing and the steps that have been taken in the past those need to be doubled down so that this process is accelerated for more such videos subscribe to the newsx youtube channel hit the bell icon